Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be checking out Debian 11 Bullseye. We're here on the login page where there's been a little bit of an update to the GNOME desktop environment. In the right hand corner we can reach accessibility here where we have such things as larger text which will be nice for the review. On the right hand side of that we can log out to power off the computer. Let's log into the user real quick and here we're welcomed by GNOME 3.38. That's right, they haven't moved on quite yet to 40, but that's to be expected, especially because Debian is a very stable release that usually contains older packages, the desktop environment being one of them. Let's jump right in and explore the desktop environment, at least the updated one. Again, I'm using GNOME 3.38, and if I hit activities in the far left-hand corner, I see what is typical of GNOME, which is a dock on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have our workspaces. In the middle, we can search for things such which is programs on this Linux distribution. And on the left hand side, we have Firefox as our default web browser, Evolution as the default email client, Rhythm Box for music, LibreOffice is the default Office Suite, our GNOME file browser, Software, Help, and then we can click Show Applications, which gives us access to more applications. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and operating system videos. Debian 11 Bullseye lives up to its name as far as being a great distribution for people who want a stable environment that just works straight out of the box. Everything's been tested and it has five years of long-term support. With that being said, some of the applications available here, if you don't have the minimal install, are some of the basic GNOME desktop programs, as well as you can see probably a few in here that, that don't make much sense, such as uh, terminals. Let's just look those up real quick. I have multiple terminals. That's because I've been messing around with multiple desktop environments. So I installed a bunch together. So you might see a few tools or programs that don't make quite sense. That's because they're from different desktop environments. Some things that we do have here are Shotwell for photos, GNOME screenshot tool, Pluma, a text editor, Paul's audio, volume control, the LibreOffice suite. We do actually get a few games as well. We have Mahjong as well as GNOME Maps. Further up, we have GIMP, as well as the GNOME extensions installed, which is great because I don't like GNOME right off the bat, how it is, so we'll be checking that out in a bit. What I do see here is Isle Riot Solitaire, another nice game. I see Audacious, and again, a few more GNOME things. I do see Chess as well, but that's really it for the packages that you get by default here. We won't go through them all, just kind of checking out what's in activities. Something that is new is now Debian supports a kernel which comes with XFAT file system support. For those of you that don't know, this is a Microsoft built file system, which was not something that Debian supported in the past. Quite an interesting development since Debian is all about open source in general. They must have worked something out in order to get a proprietary system into their own. They must trust in Microsoft or something's going on there, not sure what. Let's look at some of the news that comes directly from Debian. Bullseye ships with these desktop environments. You can select whichever one you want during the installation. We have GNOME 3.38, KD Plasma 5.20, LXDE 11, LXQT 0.16, Mate 1.24, and XFCE version 4.16. Of course, there are plenty of packages that were updated and some that were actually dropped. They say that 9,519 packages have been marked as obsolete and removed. Debian 11 Bullseye also includes numerous updates to various different software that comes standard. And something else that's very special is Debian has reached their 28th birthday, so make sure to wish Debian a happy 28th birthday. This is great because it's one of the longest lasting Linux distributions out there, and many distributions got their footing directly from Debian as ports. So it's a great thing that Debian's been able to last this long and really change the landscape of free and open source software. I did use the graphical installer to install Debian. Nothing really has changed there, only the colors and the header, so I won't really get into that. One thing I do wanna mention is Debian 11, Bullseye, supports the following architectures, which is AMD 64, ARCH64, ARM EL, ARM HF, I386, MIPS, Little Endian, and the 64-bit MIPS, 
little Indian, power processors, and IBM System Z. Up top, we have the current date and time, and a little calendar with some notifications with our GNOME desktop environment. On the right-hand side, we can click and get the wired connection, as well as volume control, and access to settings, locking, as well as powering off the computer. Let's launch a terminal real quick and check out a couple things here. This is the typical GNOME terminal, nothing special here, but let me run NeoFetch real quick. Sudo apt install NeoFetch. I know one thing that people get confused using Debian is that by default, there aren't any users added to the sudoers file besides the root user, so you'll have to add in your own user as a sudoer. I'll be making a video for that fairly shortly here, but for those of you unfamiliar with Debian, that might be a little bit of a drawback. If I run NeoFetch, we can get some system information here. We're currently running Debian 11 with kernel version 5.10. There's about 2,900 packages. We're running Bash 5.1, GNOME 3.38 with the window manager Mutter, and the theme is currently Iowata with the icon set Iowata as well. Terminal, GNOME Terminal, and I'm running this on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, and there's about 807 megabytes out of about eight gigs being used right now. And then if we check out HTOP, we can see our system resource usage. We have the CPU running between zero and 3%. Memory is at 822 megabytes out of eight gigs. Swap is not being used currently. There are 113 tasks, 268 threads, and we've been up for about 17 minutes now. I do like their background that they've added in here for Debian. They've made an update. It looks pretty good. And if we go up to activities and in the search, let's type in tweaks to see we do have the tweaks app here, which can allow you to change up different things in the GNOME desktop environment, such as the appearance. So if you don't like the Iowata default theme, you can change it to something else that might suit your needs a little better. I'm not a big fan of the Iowata theme, so let me change it to Breeze here for a moment, see what that kind of looks like. All right, not bad. GNOME Dust, not that great in my opinion. Oxygen Blue, special. All right, we'll just go back to uh, Breeze Dark, and we'll do Breeze Cursors as well with the breeze dark. There we go, that looks a little better, matches everything a little bit better on the background as well. Of course, you can mess around with this a little more as you see fit. We do have extensions here that you can enable and disable depending on what you want your GNOME desktop environment to do. I'm thinking this is looking a little bit better. I'm thinking the fonts probably need to be turned up a little bit for me at least. We have keyboard and mouse, startup applications if you want them. What the top bar has includes, so if you got a computer, you might want battery percentage, calendar, clock. Then if we go to the window tile bars, we can change up our actions as well as if we have the minimize and maximize option on our title bars. So I definitely like to turn this on and then you can switch between where you want it, left or right. There's some more options for windows and workspaces as well. One thing I like is the centering of the new windows whenever they're opened up. So if we check out, let's say Firefox real quick, it should center in the middle and it sure did. Great, it's working. I'm gonna exit out of here and go back to my desktop. One thing that's a little upsetting is GNOME 40 didn't make it quite in, but that's to be expected with Debian. They thoroughly test all their packages and anything new that's out. So GNOME 40 probably didn't have enough time as a release for Debian to adapt it in. Again, expected. And Debian is great if you're looking for an absolutely stable environment. Again, it has old packages, but they're very well tested, so you aren't going to get a bunch of broken dependencies or packages that you can't use or all of a sudden get updated and everything gets messed up on your production environment. So it does make it great for production environments in that case or servers. Debian is very known in the server space. And of course, if you don't want the stability that Debian is known for, you can try out the testing or SID known as the unstable branch. And by using SID, you'll pretty much be in a rolling development branch. So you can kind of keep up with some of the new development it's not something that Debian recommends, but for you thrill seekers out there, it is available. Well, that's really about it. We've searched through most of the environment already. There isn't too many new things here, mainly updated packages, a surprise XFAT supported system now, and a sleek looking environment for the most part. Let me know what you think about Debian 11, Bullseye, in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.